Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. That I want to start with a question. Do you find it hard to open up to people or to let them in, especially when you're struggling? Is it hard for you to ask for help or to allow people to help you? Have you ever had a crisis where you kept what was happening to yourself because you didn't want to worry the people in your life? Anybody? Anybody? Well, in today's video, I'm actually sharing my own personal experience that just happened recently with a recent health scare, the high-functioning codependent behaviors that I noticed when I was in the middle of having this experience just not even a month ago, and the cost of not asking for help, not letting people in, and not letting people witness you, because there is a cost. But as HFCs, or high-functioning codependents, as we say, we're often blind to that cost. So if you happen to be new here, my name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, the author of Boundary Boss, the Boundary Boss Workbook, and Too Much, this brand new book you see sitting right there that's coming out October 15th this year. So exciting. If you happen to be new, just know that pre-orders are happening right now. You can go to hfcbook.com and pre-order, please do. Before we get started, if you're new, please make sure that you introduce yourself in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I roll out something new, which is every Tuesday and every Thursday. Since I create this content for you, I don't want you to miss a thing. I also want to say thank you so much for all your questions and your comments. This is a very active comment section, as you guys know, and I love to highlight your questions and comments. So this is from D8001, and it's under the video, Don't Believe These Father Wound Myths, Truth Revealed Inside. No matter how long it will take for me, I will listen to all your videos because they give me keys to internal freedom, keys to become myself, to understand myself, to heal myself, to appreciate myself, to transform myself. I am 73 years old, so grateful, so grateful for all the free educational material that you provide. I am so grateful and impressed with you that you are here doing the thing that you are doing learning and evolving. Because what we really do know is that we're never too old to change anything that's not working in our lives. So props to you, D8008. I appreciate you. All right. So let's move it on into today's episode. Okay. So this is going to be a different format than what it usually is, because I really am telling you a personal story. And I'm trying to change my own HFC ways. So I thought sharing it with you might be a way that I could inspire you, A, to be on top of your health, but B, to let other people in. So I went for a mammogram. This was a few months ago. And my um, family history is that I have a lot of breast cancer in my family. So I have three older sisters. Two of the three have had breast cancer. My mother is a breast cancer survivor, and my mother's sister, when she was in her 40s, was diagnosed with breast cancer and had to have a radical mastectomy. One of my sisters also in her 40s and more in the extended family, but that's a lot of breast cancer. And the way they figure out your risk sort of of breast cancer is the more close relations you have as a woman with breast cancer, even before my mother and my sister had it, I had a 27% increased risk because a maternal aunt and one of my sisters had it. This is years ago. So I've been getting mammograms since I was, I think, 30, maybe. I, I started early because of my family history. And it's interesting. I actually had to reschedule this year's mammogram. So I was about two months late with the mammogram. So it was a little bit over a year that I'd had it. And I went in and I got home and that day I instantly in the portal there was a big word abnormal the right breast they found something and it's abnormal now I've had in the past because I have dense breasts I've had experiences before where they say we can't tell you need to go get a sonogram because you know there's something that's unclear but this was super clear that it was abnormal so I immediately felt like hmm this is different. I'm not sure what this is. So then I called them immediately. They didn't want to set up a sonogram. What they saw was something that made them say, we need to set up a um, biopsy. 
So where they do a needle biopsy, where they actually are going to take a piece so that they can analyze it to see if it's cancer. So I was immediately um, trying to control my emotional response, but really feeling scared. And this was right in the beginning of July. And so before I could even get it done, I was going to have to wait at least a bunch of days. So they were like, well, we can do it in two weeks. I was like, no, no, no. I got to find a place that's going to do it sooner. So I was able to, it was only a couple of days later that I was able to do it. It was the next week. So now you have what's happening for me internally is trying not to scare the crap out of myself that it's breast cancer. I'm trying not to think about it. I'm trying to just be like, hey, you don't know. So until there's something to worry about, there's no reason to worry. So I told Vic, my husband, what was going on, but I did it in a very like, I'm not at all worried type of way. I was like, this is super common. And what I did do is I did a lot of research quickly. Like, what is the percentage of people who have needle biopsies when they have an abnormal mammogram? And of those people, what percentage are diagnosed with cancer? So 80% of the people who have needle biopsies, at least in the research that I did, I'm not a doctor, I didn't do the research myself, I'm just telling you what I found, 80% of them have a benign result, meaning it is not cancer. So I thought, okay, I'll take those odds. And again, not really expressing to Vic how concerned I was. I told a few of my close girlfriends, my oldest friends, and I told my mother and my one sister. I didn't want to tell a lot of people. And and I do think this is a very high-functioning, codependent way of sort of looking at being in any kind of need. Because if other people are worried about me, now I got to worry about them. I know that doesn't make sense. But does does that resonate with anybody? Where it's almost like I just wanted to get through it. And one of my my girlfriends, who I didn't tell until after, said, why didn't you tell us what was going on? And I was like, I didn't want to worry, you you know? So anyway, moving on to what's that night, the night that I got the abnormal result, I had a dream. And in this dream, I was in water and there were sharks. Now, listen, you don't have to be someone who analyzes dreams for a living or a therapist to go, wow, this is so basic. Like, we can analyze this in 1.1 second. Obviously, I would feel threatened by sharks swimming in the water with me, and I feel threatened by having an abnormal mammogram result in the right breast. But I was, it felt so real. That, that's the thing. And I don't usually remember my dreams that often. It felt so real. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so scared. And I was trying to remember in the dream, do you know, how do you not look like prey to sharks? Like it was this whole machination going on in my mind about, should I not kick my legs? I couldn't remember. And then all of a sudden, under the water, I don't know how I was under the water for so long because it was a dream, people. So I guess I didn't have to breathe in this dream. But all of a sudden, there was this boat, and it was like the bottom of a boat, though. So it was this metal bar that was just going right by me, and I just effortlessly grabbed onto the bar, and it just pulled me away from danger, like effortlessly. I can't explain it. It was almost like if you were on a a skateboard in New York City, and you sort of just grabbed the side of a bus. If you were able to, there was a, a hook on the bus, and you could just grab it, and just with no effort, you're just floating away. And I woke up from the dream and I was thinking about it and thinking about it. And I was like, what does this mean to me having this dream? And I was like, oh, I'm the boat. Like, I'm the boat. I will find a way to get myself to safety. Like, whatever that means. And it wasn't even about the safety thing. It was about being able to manage whatever would happen. Right? Because it's not, I wasn't necessarily sort of praying for like the outcome that I wanted. I was envisioning and imagining that the truth about 
my internal strength, and who I am, and that whatever, wherever the chips would fall, I would be okay. Wow, it makes me want to cry. But that's really how I felt, this very, um, I don't know, it was so clear to me what the dream was about. And it made me feel so proud of all of the psychological work I've done in my life to be able to look at it from a perspective. And listen, I've had cancer before, so I also think that that helped me be able to go like, you could have cancer and live, even if it is cancer. You know what I mean? But that dream felt very like a, it was very soothing to me. Like, you know what? No matter what happens, you're going to be okay. And I had my moments throughout where the fear would come in, but it would be brief. And I would just say, hey, listen, if you get the result, if it's cancer, you're going to have plenty of time to freak out to her. Do not waste your bandwidth, your youth, and your beauty doing it now. It may not even be necessary. So just take a chill pill. I was dedicated to meditating, dedicated to just just the positive self-talk, like you're okay. Whatever it is, you're okay and you will be okay. Even if it was the ultimate not okay, it's who am I in the face of that? Who would I be? And I felt really strong that I would be okay. But I wanted to tie in, though, what I really did notice that the hypervigilance that I have around being self-sufficient, you know, I think there's a hyper-independence that can come with being, even being in recovery from HFC. But what you'll see when you get the new book, which you can pre-order right now, by the way, hfcbook.com, um, it's called Too Much. I think you're going to love it. But it's all about high-functioning codependency, is that you can be in recovery, meaning you can have good boundaries and you can not be codependently relating to the people in your life. But when you have a crisis or a potential crisis, you may just find yourself sliding back into old behavior. And for me, the old behavior was being hyper independent about it and not wanting to worry anyone else. So there's about a week period of time. I have exactly a week because I knew I wasn't going to get the results over 4th of July week because nobody was there. And it was already now going on more than a week. And I kept looking in the portal because that's where the information was supposed to be. And I finally called the breast place. And I spoke to the woman and she was like, I was just going to call you you're fine. The results are negative. Everything is okay. You'll see the, the, the results will be going into the portal soon. And I was so relieved. And I was like, thank you so much. And it was like, I just gave myself permission to lay down and really think about what came out of it for me. Like, what, what was going to be the takeaway from that experience? Joy in every step? Gratitude in everything that's right. Appreciation for the ability to go through hard things and get through on the other side. Grateful I'm alive. Grateful I don't have cancer. All of those things. But it also made me realize, like I made a list. Because, you know, I'm in the middle of a book launch and like there's all things to think about. And we're planning all these public events and, you know, there's stuff. And I was like, you know, Tara, nobody's making you do anything. So I want you to think about everything that you're doing right now as something you get to do. Like, how amazing that you get to make these plans with your team, that you're doing this amazing summit, which you guys, you have got to sign up for. It's so going to be so amazing. I'm, I'm interviewing and have interviewed like the top 30 relationship experts. It's all about epic relationships. So it's going to be great. You're going to absolutely love it. Go to terrycole.com forward slash summit is how you sign up for that. But in the meantime, what I want this episode to stand for you is if you've been putting off your health, if it's time for you to get a mammogram, go get it. If you haven't had a mammogram in a long time, 
go get it. If there's some other health thing that you're sort of ignoring or putting away or pushing off, if you're over 50 and you haven't had a colonoscopy, plan it. You know, this is important. If you don't have insurance, there's a lot of places where you can, you know, we'll put some resources of where you can get mammograms for free. There's a lot of resources where that's provided for you, but you still got to do it. And it's so important. It's so easy to say, I'm good, I'm fine, right? To not let anyone in on what's going on for you, not letting anyone worry. But what I've realized is that in doing it alone, and I did, it's not like I didn't tell anyone, I did, but I didn't tell my kids either. You know, Vic was like, well, you're going to tell the boys. I was like, no, why are we telling them now? I would probably still make that same choice, honestly, because literally, they're my kids. Why, why worry them? My friends, my sisters, my mother, okay, those people, it's not that I want them to be worried because there's another way of looking at it. So if you're in that situation and you find yourself not letting other people show up for you, because that's really what it is, we have a tendency, if you're a high-functioning codependent, to show up for everyone else. And I think that when I'm saying I don't want them to worry about me, I know I've crossed over to their side of the street. My side of the street is what I'm going through. Their side of the street is how they react to the information I give them. So I think it deepens the intimacy in relationships when we can allow other people to show up for us. So I feel like I did an okay job. I didn't do the best job with this scare, but I did an okay job. So for those of you who are going through something, choose the people wisely who you want to share with, right? You got to be discerning about who you share with, because there may be people that you will, you will feel compelled to take care of them, right? If it's someone where it's always about them, they'll somehow make your health crisis about them too. So how do you actually ask for support? Think about the people whose support you want, and then tell the truth. Hey, I'm actually waiting for these test results. I'm a little bit nervous. I could use some support, right? Just tell the truth. Right. I think that a lot of us walk around in life not wanting to be a burden to other people. But I also think that's a mask and an excuse for not wanting to be vulnerable. I think that's the thing that we really don't want to be. Because when I worry about a friend, when my friend is going through something and she tells me, when Vic is going through something, do I feel burdened by them? No. I feel close to them. I feel connected to them. So part of what I'm hoping that you'll take away from this episode of The Terry Cole Show is that there's a way for us to allow the people in our lives to do that and be that for us. And this is what having healthy relationships, speaking of epic relationships, this is what having epic relationships is all about. You know, and when we are hypervigilant in our own independence, taking care of everyone else. What we're not doing is taking care of ourselves first. And really, the truth is, that's the only way you're going to be in epic relationships with other people if you have an epic relationship with yourself. It is so incredibly important that you do that and that you give yourself permission to be supported by the people who love you. Right? So anyway, I have some ideas for you in the guide terrycole.com forward slash guide. Make sure that you sign up for the summit. And please let this be, if you're waiting for a sign, if you need to go to the skin doctor to get checked, if you need to do anything around your health, if you have an inkling that something might be wrong, but you're not dealing with it, this is your sign. A loving kick in the ass from me to you to get yourself to a doctor. And we will include some resources in the guide for low-cost or free mammogram places. In the meantime, I hope that this added value to your life. Thank you for letting me share with you. Thank you for letting me be vulnerable with you guys, because as you know, this is not my regular way of relating to you, partly because I don't want you to worry about me, but I figured I could tell you, since I know that I don't have breast cancer, that it was okay to share the story, and I really thought that maybe there would be something valuable that you would get 
out of this episode of The Terry Cole Show. So thank you for holding space for me, and I am always holding space for you. As always, you guys, you know what I'm going to say. Take care of you first, you and your health.